Hey everyone, it is Egypt and Robert here tonight, and we just wanted to share some updates with you. We have some good news, some not so good news, and some really great news. So we're just going to start off with the not so great news and it's about Dinah. I'm kind of sad about her, but she has some issues that we weren't totally aware of, but she got a really, really good examination by somebody at a machine shop. And so each chip's going to tell you what they found. Yeah. We took her to a specialist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know how, and you know what happens when you go to a specialist. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and hit the notification button so you'll get all of the information on our latest videos. Her engine is a flathead, a Continental F244. It's 244 cubic inch displacement engine. And this particular engine is known for developing cracks in the block between the cylinder wall and the intake valves. Uh, I did find a couple of cracks in the engine block that appear that they, you know, I imagine they've been, they were there the last time that the engine was rebuilt, but for whatever reason, they didn't touch them because they didn't need to. They didn't interfere with compression or they didn't uh, extend down into the water jackets where you worry about getting antifreeze in the uh, oil or oil in the antifreeze. So, uh, but now they've grown and well, and upon visible inspection, we could not tell how deep they were, but the guy at the machine shop did magno... Magnaflux. Magnaflux on it, and so now the cracks are farther down into the bore. That's not really the right term, mm -hmm. but I guess they're farther down into the bore, which um, hurts the integrity of the, of the block and all mm -hmm. of that. And I, I, in looking at it, I always thought it looked kind of small anyway, the area between the bore and the wall mm -hmm. or what, whatever it's called. But yeah, so it is kind of small and that takes us to the next step, mm -hmm. which with the problems that it has, we're gonna have to go take it to Independence, Missouri to a place called Grindstaff and they have lots of experience with these Continental engines. The space between the cylinders, the amount of uh, cast iron that is in between the cylinders, not very much. One of the fixes for this particular engine is to do what they call sleeving it. And that's where you bore out the area a little larger and you insert a metal sleeve which becomes your cylinder, that makes the cylinder smaller. Uh, so overall, you're reducing the overall displacement size of the engine. In this case, it would be from 244 cubic inches to 226 cubic inches, which results in a trade-off. And that trade-off is a loss of like four horsepower. So with the trade-off you get in horsepower, we get more reliability out of the engine, more long-term reliability. It's a full rebuild. Who knows, it might even save a couple of pennies in gasoline because it has a smaller displacement. I'll tell you, the last thing we want on that beautiful piece of land out there is to have a backhoe break down and become absolutely worthless out there and become an eyesore. So <clears throat> we'd rather have a machine that's reliable that we can go to and then that we would feel uh, better about selling to someone later on. Even with the additional expense of taking it to the other machine shop, we're still under what we, or about even with what we projected the cost of this rebuild would be. Mm -hmm. And then that is still considerably less than what we would have to pay a contractor to come to, to do the dirt work at Contentment. So even though we're having some, you know, road bumps, some little problems along the way. We're really happy. I mean, I, sh I shouldn't speak. Maybe he's not happy, but I'm really happy with the progress that we're making on the backhoe and stuff. I'm not happy. No. <laughs> I wish it didn't cost us much, um, but we still think we're going to be able to sell it for what we put into it. Uh, so I'm not too worried about it. It's just, you know, the outlay. it will be about a month, I think, uh, for them to get the engine sleeved and machined and ready for us. But, um, in the meantime, there are plenty of things uh, we still need to do. We need to rebuild this distributor. My next project yeah. on the grinder. Yeah. We've got to uh, rebuild a water pump, um, possibly rebuild an oil pump, and a transmission. 
So there's plenty on our plate, um, plenty that we can do between now and then, and, uh, and then it'll just be that much faster when it's time to put it back together. We had hoped to have the backhoe operating under its own power again by March 1st of 2019, but that doesn't look like it's gonna happen because we've gotta run this engine to Independence, Missouri, and then get it back, and the time delay involved there, and just reassembling it, all kinds of stuff. Um, so, it's gonna take a little longer than we thought. Push it back at least 15 days, who knows, maybe 30. But uh, we'll get her there, and uh, it's it should still be done in time for the summer of 2019 when we take it out to contentment and start using it. So. The good news we would like to share with you is that we just more than doubled the size of contentment. Mm -hmm. That's right. The county uh, had an acreage right next to contentment that was for sale and we picked it up at auction and now contentment has more than doubled in size. But our goal is to pick up as much of that area out there as we can. Anyway, and uh, one last update, which we think is pretty cool. We have been mulling over house plan design for, well? Well, we started last March, April, and in April of last year, 2018, we had finalized a set of plans in a legal pad, and we mulled it over and talked about it for you know a few hours. And we were really happy with that design, but we don't know where we put it. So we're not back to square one because we have the plans that we based those plans on. So we had to kind of redo some of the original concept that we had going forward with contentment. And we've learned some more since then too about better placement of rooms and thermal mass and uh, heating uh, devices and stuff. So anyway, we're getting closer to being all the way finished and yeah so we you know we've been looking at plans we've found online and things like that and trying to come up with ideas we pretty much have the design in our heads we just need to draw it out again and then uh, the husband of one of our subscribers is an architect and so we'll submit our ideas to him and uh, obtain a simple set of plans and um, take it from there so we'll have a set of plans we don't need an elaborate set since the county doesn't have any building codes out there, uh, the only thing they require is an electrical inspection, a plumbing inspection, which, you know, is, is fine, and we can provide a set of drawings for those if we need to. But other than that, you know, the only thing that the county wants if, for a permit is just a, a floor plan. A detailed set of plans would be nice. Not sure we need, we can justify the expense for what we're gonna do. Exciting times for us. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the way it is. <laughs> yes, like sands through the hourglass. Don't put that in because that's copyrighted, I'm sure. <laughs>